Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's look at how to make the floating text effect and make it look real in Caden Live. So just to break down the different layers first, you need something that is of reality or at least starts with something that looks like reality. I'm gonna take away the text pieces here just for a moment. And I'm doing a very simple handheld spin. All right, don't have a gimbal, don't have fancy equipment to do that. This is just me, it's a little bumpy along the way, that's okay. The other thing that you'll want to pay attention to is you do need something for reference. And this is for motion tracking, and I'll explain why that's important. I just put a leaf there, but you could also refer to a shrub or something else that the AI model can discriminate against, uh, something that's distinct enough that it can map and move with. So understanding that, first thing that we would do is go look at the motion tracking. Motion tracker. Drag that in, select that. And the algorithm that I'm going to use for now is Deceum. Uh, Nano sounds really cool. It's in the latest release, but I can't really get it working. It's having some issues. I hope to use it because it's much lighter weight, but maybe in the future. So for now, I'm going to use Deceum. I'm going to put the tracker over here and just kind of rein that in a little bit because I want to track my leaf. That gives us kind of the spin idea and follow up on how that works. And then I'm going to analyze to apply effect. So what has just happened is the system has created keyframes for me by attempting to track out the leaf. And you can see it has done that. It gives us a motion path to work from. From this point, this is where the magic really starts to happen. And from here, if you want to use text, you'll need to create titles. That's what I did. And I created text effects. And for this, I'm going to jump on over to the other build here. Just to walk through this because everything's laid out, I can walk through it a bit easier this way. You need two copies of the same one, but don't worry about that just yet. Create one with whatever text you need. And then what you're gonna wanna do first is add in a position and zoom. Over in the effects, position and zoom. And what you would do then, I've already got these laid in here. So what you're gonna do is head to your motion tracker, three lines. Copy all keyframes to clipboard. This is going to save us a ton of work here. It's already mapped out the motion. I'm going to go to this. And just so you can see it work, this is already in. I'm going to hide that away and then put it in a new position in Zoom. Just so you can see what I'm doing. Three lines. Import keyframes instead of copy. Now we're importing. All right, and this is where some really cool magic happens. All right, first thing we need to do is we don't want it the geometry because that's going to resize according to what we just mapped. We don't want that. We want position. Okay, now the initial position is not going to be right. So what we have to do then is we have to correct it. And you can see as I start to increase this, well, increase <laughs> relative to the negative, um, you can see how that now starts to appear in the screen it was off because it's mapping again positionally against you could try to mess with the corners a little bit but you're going to end up correcting no matter how you do it so i just leave them as top left and then compensate for the position offset which is a huge time saver all right um, so we're going to need negative values for this one too and what you want to do is get that position to the place that you want it to show up now mine already appears there so i'm working on this one but essentially, we're just looking to get it in the neighborhood of in the middle of the window. So you may just need to increase incrementally a little bit to it's roughly in the place. And nah, that's not too bad. What I want to do is try to work it so that the, the, the beam here runs through the text. And that's about where I'd like it. All right. So if I click OK, that has now brought in all those keyframes. And you can see how that sticks with that motion. It actually follows the discriminated motion of the leaf. All right, so understanding that, what I'm going to do now, because I've already done this, take that one away and reactivate this one. Just for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is move this over. Next thing we're going to want to do is correct the perspective, because now that we got all that motion mapped in, we didn't really have to do anything. Motion Tracker did that for us. What we can do next is drag in a corners effect. Corners will help you set for perspective. So if you drag that in, I'm just going to reactivate mine. What happens is you set the points. If I pull back, you have to drag the corners. <laughs> That's why it's called that. 
out to set the perspective that you want and you can see how I've lined that up just so it kind of cuts through the middle of it. It has big on this end, little on that end to keep pace with the beam here. And also you're probably going to need to change the alpha operation to minimum and it's defaulting to right on clear and that does not respect the alpha layer. So you need to set that to minimum to wash that out. Get rid of it. All right, so once you have your perspective set, you're probably going to want to create at least an endpoint. I had to do two uh, just because by the end, while it did calculate and I was able to recorrect the points the other way as I spun around it, in the middle it started to get off because I did a little bumpiness as I was trying to correct my own posture. So that keeps it reasonably in the place that I want to. You could get a little nitpicky with it, but this is just the demo and you can understand how that works. So at this point, what you do is copy it and then move the cursor and then paste it or control V. That gives you a second one, which you're going to want to drag underneath. The next part is going to be really the coolness of where we start to make this match up. We start to make it look real. The reason we need a secondary one is because we're going to create the shadow. We're going to create uh, the part that reflects in this beam and or blocks out light. First thing you need to do is again, we need a position in zoom. You may need to do a little correction along the way, but that's okay. You notice how they're not on top of each other yet, or they're not where they should be, but they are following that same motion. We do have to bring in a corners effect. You can, again, use the one that was already there when you copied it, and it should have it in the right spot to keep it going. All right, so corner, we need to make sure that's in place, just so, again, you have the right perspective. You may need to do <clears throat> a little bit of tweaking the, an adjustment to it because it is going to be at a slightly different angle, but probably not too much. Next thing to do is to throw on a flip. Now, this is different from mirror. There is a mirror effect. I'm doing the uh, the flip vertically just to flip it down the other way. Horizontally would be this way. Mirror, what it'll do is it'll keep the original and mirror it in a direction that you say, but I found it a little bit too difficult and unwieldy just to put it in the spot that I wanted it. And plus, I want to control the effects of the mirror differently than I do the text effect itself. So I had to separate. So flipping will invert that so it turns upside down. And with our positioning, again, you may need to do a little tweaking in the positioning here just to make sure that it's in the right spot and it lines up this way. Next thing to really start to blend this in is something called an alpha gradient. And the way you set this up is under the operation, again, you do have to flip this to minimum, otherwise you're gonna get black and that doesn't quite do what I wanna do here. So we wanna put to minimum so it respects the alpha and it instead washes it over the element, the video object. Next thing we need to do is we need to adjust the tinting of it, the color of it. And to do that, what I did is I put on brightness control and then dropped it all the way off. So there is brightness. Brought that in, it's gonna activate mine. I only have the one keyframe because it doesn't really need to change under these conditions, but I took the brightness all the way off, which gives it kind of this dull shadowy effect. And the last thing is that because there's some diffusion in this reflection, this is not a mirror surface, it's gonna be blurred some. It's not gonna be picture sharp. So I went and put on a blur, box blur actually. If you go look for blur, you can get that box blur. I'm going to reactivate mine, and these you just small touches, small percentage will get what you need. But you can see how that now already has that laid in, blurred a little bit, and diffuses it with the alpha gradient. So now if we take that back again, we can now see that both these things that I've made follow reasonably well. There might be some correction needed towards the end because it's inverting it. And there should be a little touch up done there, but it saved a lot of time doing motion tracking and matching it up. And the more accurate you are with your movement, the more stable you are with your movement, the less bump there'll be in compensation for the motion tracking, the cleaner it'll be. This is a very simple test just to give you the effect. Let me show you the full rendering again so you can see it. If you'd like to find out more about Caden Live, please consider buying my ebook, Every Tool You Need for Content Creation, for free. It covers all the basic use of Caden Live, as well as many other tools that are essential for content creation. And all these tools are free, available right now 
Link is in the description below. Thank you so much. And that is how it's done. So I hope that's helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if it is. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already. And please come back. I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Thank you so much for lending me your support by spending your time learning this with me and experiencing all this. I can't wait to the next video. I love you all. I'll catch you then.